On today's show, finally, the Silverado gets a facelift. Subaru says forget what Sergio says, it doesn't need a merger. And what's this? Roads made out of plastic? All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for July 14th of 2015. When the Chevy Silverado was completely redesigned two years ago, we had a hard time telling the new one from the old one. The only quick way to tell the new one from the old one were the windshield wipers set below the hood line and the steps built into the rear bumper. That's not a very good way to differentiate an all new model. So finally, the Silverado is getting a facelift, which includes a new hood, grille, and headlamps. It also gets updated infotainment and safety technologies. While the Silverado got off to a slow sales start, lately it's running red hot, and this facelift is going to give the truck even more momentum in the marketplace. Car sharing could really disrupt the auto industry. If more people start sharing cars, fewer people will buy one for themselves. And that means car sales could start a long-term downward trend. That's why a number of automakers are starting to experiment with their own ride-sharing program. Opel is the latest to jump on the bandwagon. It just invested in a ride-sharing company called Flink, which will provide the platform for Opel's new car-sharing app called CarUnity. The two companies began collaborating earlier this year on a ride-sharing pilot program for Opel's employees in Rüsselheim, Germany. We'll be back with more news right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Hyundai. Learn more at Hyundai.com. Last week we showed you ZF's smart urban vehicle with its amazing maneuverability. One reason the car has such a tight turning radius is thanks to its rear twist beam axle with integrated electric motors. The ETB, as the company calls it, is a twist beam axle with two electric motors at each end. They are 40 kilowatt electric motors with gear reduction built into an aluminum housing. The compact design eliminates the need for subframes and other axle components. It also provides torque vectoring, and that tightens up the turning radius even more. If you're turning left, for example, the right rear electric motor provides power. ZF is promoting the ETB as a way to easily convert a front-wheel drive car into a plug-in hybrid. Fiat Chrysler CEO Sergio Marchione is telling anyone who will listen that the auto industry needs more mergers. He says small car companies can't survive because they don't have the scale necessary to drive down cost. But Subaru does not agree. Tom Dahl, the president of Subaru of America, says they don't need to merge. Speaking on Autoline this week, he says, and I quote here, I think there's always going to be places in the market for companies that can occupy certain niches, end quote. He points to Subaru's all-wheel drive lineup and its horizontally opposed boxer engine as features that make the company unique. Dahl goes on to say, there's a certain group of customers that appreciate that type of technology and are willing to pay for it, end quote. Of course, Subaru is partly owned by Toyota, but the point stands. It does not need to merge with Toyota to survive and thrive. And coming up next, big trucks and plastic roads. Why Sonata? Let's see. It has a turbocharged engine, a panoramic sunroof, 32 miles per gallon highway. Oh, I didn't, did I mention the turbo? You, you don't want to forget the turbo. It has turbo, the Sonata from Hyundai. Sales of medium and heavy duty trucks soared last month in the US. Wards reports that big truck makers sold more than 42,000 units, a gain of nearly 21% compared to a year ago. This is the 22nd month in a row that medium and heavy duty trucks have posted a year over year gain. Class 8 trucks led all segments with a 25% increase in June. In fact, all companies in that segment posted double digit gains. As we keep pointing out, this is a great sign because big truck sales are a leading indicator as to which way the economy is heading, and these sales suggest another six months of strong economic growth. You know that empty water bottle on the side of the road might become more than just debris. 
Autoblog reports that a Dutch construction company called Plastic Roads is ready to make roads out of recycled water bottles and other waste plastic. And it will pre-manufacture the roads in segments, like a big plastic puzzle that just gets dropped into place. This could drastically reduce construction and repair time. The plastic road pieces are hollow to house pipes and wires and allow easy installation on sand surfaces. They can withstand temperatures between negative 40 and 80 degrees Celsius. The company admits there are concerns with replacing the road segments with wires and pipes already embedded into them. The plastic surface may also create a more slippery surface during rainy conditions. We also question whether plastic roads is simply combining all kinds of plastics into a material that cannot be recycled. Even so, this is an intriguing concept that potentially represents a breakthrough in road construction. You know, when Sandy Monroe was on Autoline After Hours talking about his comprehensive teardown of the i3, he said BMW saved $300 million in tooling costs by going with carbon fiber. Is he right though? Well, we're going to learn a lot more about the i3 this Thursday when John Kelly, BMW North America's product manager, comes on After Hours. So join us for the best in-depth product discussions in the business. With that, we wrap up today's report, but we invite you to join us again tomorrow.